we are finally ready to get into what I would consider the fun part. Now, don't get me wrong, learning new skills like how to use Illustrator and all of that stuff was very fun in and of itself, but now we get to work on actually designing a button up. The part about pattern drafting that I really like is the design aspect, so I'm super, super excited to dive into this. I'm basically just gonna work through the modules from the course that I'm taking. I'll be linking all the course information down below for you if you're interested. Now let's get into it. In this module, Victoria's taking us through how to turn our basic bodice block into a button-up shirt. We're basically just moving things around, creating a yoke, creating a button placket, and things of that nature. This top is gonna have all of the traditional elements of a long sleeve button-up, and we get to choose if we want it to be more like dress length or more like a shirt length. Right now, I'm working on creating the yoke as well as the button placket. So relatively speaking, adjusting the bodice block to have a yoke and a button placket was actually significantly easier and faster than I had anticipated it being. At this point, I'm feeling a lot more solid in my illustrator skills, and I think that it shows because it's so much faster for me to click through these projects, and I can almost keep up with Victoria as her videos are playing. Before, I was doing a whole lot of listening and pausing and then trying it on my own and then going back and forth and back and forth, but now while there is still back and forth, it is a lot less. For me, that feels like a really big accomplishment in a short time frame, and I'm so excited. Now it's time for me to draft the collar, so I'm going to go ahead and print out the worksheet. Each of these modules has a worksheet that goes hand in hand with the video tutorial, and you basically just use them side by side. I find this really helpful because we all have different learning styles, and for me, having both audio and visuals helps everything come full circle in my mind. And without further ado, I'm going to jump right into making this collar. Hello, welcome back. In this video, we are going to draft a collar for your button-up shirt. Okay, it's about 20 minutes later, and look at my collar! It's so cool! <laughs> Obviously, everything is just being drafted on Illustrator right now, so I'm not totally positive how it's going to translate to, like, a pointy collar on a shirt. But next up, I'm going to add seam allowances, and then I think we're going to be able to get right into printing and trying it out. I'm actually specifically excited about making a collar because I feel like just changing the shape of a collar can make a dramatic difference in the design of a shirt. Obviously, but up shirts can be really basic and they've been around forever, but there are lots of design elements that you can change to make it your own. I don't wear button ups super often, but it'd be really cool to be able to design a button up that reflects my personal style. I often find that there are specific reasons that I don't like button ups. For example, if the collar's rounded, it's not really my favorite, or if there's a lack of volume in the sleeve where I could add something poofy, that would be really cool. There are just a variety of things that I could change that I feel like would help it suit my personal style better. But anyways, all of that to say that I'm getting really excited about this idea of taking a traditional garment that I wouldn't necessarily wear and changing the design elements so that it fits my personal style. And hopefully by the end of this course, not only will I be able to change specific design elements of a pre-existing pattern, but I'll actually actually be able to create patterns fully from scratch. I feel like I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but I'm so excited and I really wanted to share that with you. I think that next step is creating the sleeve and the sleeve placket, and then after that we're going to add seam allowances and hopefully get this button up started. So let's get into it. You guys would not believe how quickly this just came together. I think I started at like 10 a.m. and it is, it's literally 12.34. I just drafted an entire button up in two and a half hours. I'm blown away. I'm impressed with myself. I'm excited. I've learned so much so far. Everything is great. I'm so excited. Now, that's not to say that there wasn't a lot of trial and error involved to get to this point, but now that I've built up all these illustrator skills and I had a lot of practice under my belt, it's going so much smoother than in the very beginning. I'm gonna get into the next module real quick to add seam allowances, and then we're gonna go from there. Okay, so I'm just about finished adding seam allowances to my pattern pieces, but it is time for one of our weekly group calls, so I'm gonna hop on that, and then I'll finish doing the seam allowances afterwards. <laughs> So I just got off the group call and Victoria did get to take a little peep at the button up that I've been working on and the feedback was really good. I really love getting on these group calls because not only do I get some feedback, but I also get to see other people's feedback and see the places that they're struggling. That way I can learn from what they're going through and see what Victoria's feedback is for them. So now that our call's done, I'm ready to hop back into making those seam allowances and then I'm going to move on from there. Um, Okay, 
Okay, so my button up is nearly finished. I'm gonna insert a picture for you because I'm just so, so proud of it. All I need to do now is learn how to true the pattern and then format it to print it. Then we'll print it out and I'll start sewing up a muslin. I'm so excited. I don't know if you've ever felt that feeling of being so happy that you could literally cry, but that's me right now because I just printed my first ever PDF sewing pattern. It all came together in such a short amount of time and I'm just really, really proud. I can't tell you how much time I've spent trying to learn this information on my own. I've spent hours and hours just even looking for resources, let alone finding something that I can learn from. I feel like the sheer fact that I could even make this in the amount of time that I have since I started this course is unfathomable and it's a huge testament to the fact that I'm learning so so much in this course and it's all really really tangible information. This course was gifted to me but the proof is in the pudding. Like I can't make this stuff up. I made this PDF pattern and I am so proud. I'm learning so much in such a short amount of time and I'm over the moon that I get to take you on this journey. I would not have been able to get this far on my own and I'm so thankful to Victoria for creating this course. I really believe that if you want to learn how to make and grade patterns, this is a perfect course for you. Okay, enough of me droning on about how cool I think this course is. Obviously, you guys can tell how far I've come in just a short amount of time and how much value there really is to be had. I'm going to go ahead and start piecing together this pattern. It's 25 pages, so it might take me a little bit of time. I started by just printing out the first piece of paper that has the test square on it to make sure that my printer was all set up properly, and it was. I did run into an issue where the bottom of the page didn't want to print, but it's only like a few millimeters, so it's not that big of a deal. I chatted with Victoria about it on the group call, and basically she said that I could make the tiling template smaller so that it fits the needs of my personal printer, but for the purposes of everyone else being able to print my patterns in the future, the tiling template is the right size to be compatible with all different at-home printers, and the size of paper is actually different in the US versus other places, so I've decided to to continue using the recommended tiling size that Victoria gives in the course because the issue is definitely the limitations of my personal printer and I know where the pattern pieces are supposed to match up so I'm just gonna draw on those extra lines I'm gonna tile everything together and then we're gonna get to cutting all of my pattern pieces are cut out and it is time to bust out the muslin I'm basically just gonna place the pattern pieces on top of my fabric cut it all out and then sew it up into a button-up Time to unfold the burrito. This part's always kind of scary. <laughs> I don't know why, I just feel like it's never gonna work and then it always does. Ta-da, it worked, yay. All right, my button up is far enough along to do a first fitting. It basically has a collar, the bodice, as well as one sleeve. Since this is just a first draft, I'm not gonna sew on the other sleeve because I expect that there's gonna be some fit issues and I'm gonna need to change it on Illustrator and I don't wanna waste my time sewing on a sleeve if I'm gonna have to change it anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this on and take a video for Victoria so that she can help me identify where the fit issues are and then we're gonna go from there. Okay, it is on. And there are definitely some things that need to be changed, I think. I'm going to send a video over to Victoria, and she's going to help me figure out what fit adjustments need to be made on the paper pattern, and then I'll go ahead and adjust it in Illustrator and do another twall. Hi! Okay, so here is my first twall. Um, some things that I'm noticing right off the bat are that the cuff is definitely too small. If there was a button on here, they wouldn't be able to match up. And then the collar 
it this part keeps standing up and I'm not sure why I think maybe it's like too tall here but definitely it's a tiny bit tight just for my preference I think like it technically fits but it does feel a little bit tight um okay I like the button pocket I like how long it is I think that maybe the circumference around the sleeve needs to be more um it just feels a bit tight for my preference and then definitely around this way like I don't know you can probably see some pulling there's not enough width around um yeah I don't know obviously this is my unprofessional opinion of the fit so yeah I would love to know what your thoughts are and what you think needs to be fixed here's what it looks like all the way around thanks so now my file is officially uploaded into the course so Victoria can review it. I did end up taking a video and then having to compress the video so that it would upload properly. So I'm hoping that the video actually looks good enough for Victoria to see what's going on and doesn't come out too grainy or anything. But if it does, I'll just upload some pictures instead. I'm gonna wait for her review and I will get back to you then. Good morning, it is the next day. I received a video from Victoria. It's feedback on the PDF files that I made. I kind of jumped the gun in that I printed and sewed up the PDF before receiving her feedback, but I kind of knew that I was on the right track, or at least I thought I was on the right track, and Victoria had already said she peeked at the files and I was on the right track, so I figured it was okay, and it totally was. There is some stuff that I need to change in the PDF files. Basically, I had some issues with trimming up the pattern. None of them were fatal issues by any means. There were some seams that were off by like literally millimeters, but when you actually cut and sew a garment, you're not going to see those little millimeters of difference in the fabric. However, with that being said, I do want my patterns to be as A plus as possible. So I'm going to go back onto Illustrator and I'm going to make some minor adjustments based on Victoria's feedback. That should fill up all the time between now and our next group call, which is in about an hour. And I know that in that group call, she's going to go over the first draft of some of our button ups that we've submitted. So hopefully that'll give me a better idea on how the rest of today is going to go. But anyways, I'm going to hop onto Illustrator and make some changes and then we're going to get on that group call. Well, I mean, none of that is going to affect the quality of your sewn garment significantly. Let me know what you think of all of that if you have any questions. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing your thing all sewn up. So... Um, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, I just finished making all those adjustments to the PDF pattern, and now I'm gonna hop on the group call. Hi, everybody. Okay, so that went really well. I feel like I learned so much information from that one group call. Victoria did go over my video that I sent her. She also went over someone else's in the class and it was really, really insightful. When I originally sent Victoria the video of my muslin, I said something to the degree of, this is how I see it based on my untrained eye. And when she just reviewed my video, she talked about adjustments that I wouldn't have noticed because I have an untrained eye. So I asked her, after this 12 weeks is up and I no longer have access to just, you know, text you and be like, hey, um, I don't know what's going on here. Can you help me? Like, what am I going to do without a personal Victoria telling me what to do? And what she said is that by the end of this 12 weeks, the goal is for me to have a trained eye so that I can see those fit adjustments without her being there. So anyways, that was super encouraging. And after our call today, I already feel like I'm gaining some of those skills so I can have a trained eye and it's feeling really, really good. So I'm going to go ahead and put on that button up and then I'm going to talk you through some of the fit adjustments that we talked about and why they are the way that they are. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, you guys would not believe how difficult it is to pin a button up up that doesn't have buttons on it. <laughs> it feels like so restrictive and it's like hard to get up in here, especially because the collar is tight. It's drafted to be tight, so it makes sense. But anyways, it is finally on. Let's talk about the fit. So first we talked about the collar here. As you can see, the collar flips up um, on one side, I don't really know why it doesn't do it on the other side, but essentially what's happening is that over here, there's a bit too much height right here, which is causing this flip. With that being said though, there are different factors that you need to take into consideration when you're making your own pattern. For example, is this pattern meant to be in a cotton material? Is it meant to be in a silk material? That is gonna change the way that the collar lays. So say for example that I wanted to do a more fluid material, this collar wouldn't be an issue. It's only showing up as an issue because of the type of fabric that I'm using. If in the situation where I really liked this collar, but I was planning to use something like a cotton, there are different things that you can put inside of the collar to make it stand the way that you want. 
So with that being said, for the purposes of this assignment, I'm not going to change the color at all because I do really like the way that it's drafted, even though it's causing this little flip up issue. And the reason that is, is because there are ways to fix the issue. And I don't plan to bring this button up all the way to fruition, like being a fully graded pattern that I'm going to sell or something. So that's not much of an issue. I'm going to move on from that. So the next thing we talked about is how tight the actual collar is. The purpose of this assignment was to take the basic bodice block that we drafted and turn it into a button up. That way, once we've sewn up our muslin, we can see where there might have been fit issues that came from the basic bodice block. With that being said, the block is made to fit close to your neckline so that when you change the block into whatever pattern you're envisioning from it, you can say, okay, this is my true neckline. I'm gonna move five centimeters down to create a V-neck or whatever the case may be. So this neckline, is supposed to fit snug and it is fitting how it's supposed to fit. This wouldn't be my personal preference if I was creating my own button-up pattern to sell or to wear for myself, but for the purposes of this assignment, having a really snug collar is the goal. The next adjustment that we talked about is in relation to the sleeve and the sleeve cap. When I move my arms around, it feels really restrictive in this area, so I kind of knew that there was an issue going on here, but I wasn't sure if it was related to the bodice or if it was related to the actual sleeve itself. And the answer is kind of both. So something that's kind of funny is that I messaged Victoria when I was, you know, this far along making my muslin, asking if I needed to put the other sleeve on. And that was really just out of me being lazy and not wanting to put the other sleeve on. There is three centimeters of ease in the sleeve cap, which means that the sleeve is three centimeters bigger than the hole that it's going into. So you have to like maneuver it a lot. And honestly, I was sweating under my machine trying to get the sleeve in there. It ended up being okay, but it was kind of tired. I didn't want to put the other sleeve on. So anyways, I messaged Victoria to see if I could just omit the other sleeve for the purposes of this fit adjustment. And she said that I could. So I stopped there. And although it was out of laziness, it actually worked in my favor because when we were talking about the sleeve and the sleeve cap, I was kind of having trouble envisioning what Victoria was saying. But because this sleeve wasn't attached, I could move this arm around and she could see and she could tell me where to be looking. So while not putting this other sleeve on was actually just out of pure laziness, it worked in my favor. And that's because when we were talking about the sleeve and the sleeve cap, I could see what was happening on this side without the sleeve versus how it looks with the sleeve on. So with that being said, moving forward when I do twirls for my own personal patterns, I think I'm going to go with this method of only doing one sleeve so I can kind of see where the issues lie. Anyways, let's talk about what's happening in here. So when I move my arm around, it feels a bit restrictive in here. And when you look on this side, if I move my arm up, you can see that there is like quite a bit of space between where the bottom of the sleeve is here versus where my actual armpit is. And what Victoria was saying is that even though it might be counterintuitive, like to create more restriction, to add more fluidity throughout the arm, if you were to make this sleeve be all the way around my, you know, like natural armpit area, it would actually create more range of motion. And the reason that is, is because the closer you are to your armpit, the more fabric there actually is for you to be able to move around. So that's an adjustment that I need to make. I'm gonna measure how far needs to be and then I can change that on Illustrator. Another thing that we talked about is if I'm standing straight up and you're looking at this side here, you can tell that where my shoulder actually slopes down is quite a bit farther away from where the end of the sleeve cap is. So what really needs to happen is here, this line needs to be moved out to the end of my sleeve so that the sleeve lays properly. The adjustment will change the back a little bit, but basically we're going to bring this up into my armpit and then move this point out a little bit. Then once that's done, I'll have to change the way that the sleeve head is curved so that the sleeve is fitting properly. Other than that, the only other thing is that when I stand to the side, you can kind of see that the seam line is pulling a little bit, but the reason that is is because Back here, we've got a dart, and the dart is purposely allowing that range of motion, which is causing the pull to come forward a little bit. So it's not really an issue, it's just a design element for me to take note of. The last thing is in relation to the sleeve here. Let me take this off. The sleeve cuff is a little bit too small because if there was gonna be a button on here, it would need to have overlap for the button. So that needs to change, and 
Other than that, it went pretty well, I would say. Now, because this button up is just an assignment, it doesn't really need to be taken all the way to full fruition. So I'm gonna make these adjustments in Illustrator, but I'm not gonna make another twill. I could if I wanted to, but I think I'd rather prioritize my personal projects because the sooner that I start on those personal projects, the sooner the PDF pattern is gonna be finished and ready for you guys. Finishing these adjustments on Illustrator will also be a good stopping point because then I can move on to making my basic block for a skirt and for pants. So yeah, I'm gonna spend some time on the course. There are two more videos for me to watch on fitting and adjusting the pattern in Illustrator, and those will basically just help me understand how to take the fit issues that I'm seeing and apply them to my pattern. Then I'm gonna finish it up in Illustrator and I will be done with this pattern. Since this pattern isn't gonna come to full fruition and you watching me sit on my computer isn't that fun, this will be the end of the video. So I'm gonna get stuck into the course now and I will see you in the next one.